Hey guys, Decap13 here, and welcome back to some more Let's Play Fate Grand Order. So I actually went ahead and checked, because I wanted to see how much more was left of Babylonia. We have like, after this I think like, four sections left. And two of those sections are completely story. So really, we only have three combat based sections left. Which is pretty nice. But they are pretty long, so... Let's buckle down and get these over with. Because, oh boy, I'm not looking forward to this shit. Alright, uh, so Berserker and Lancer, I'm gonna bring a Saber, because that would be the smart thing to do. Uh, do I have anyone who has, like, a, a charged up one already? Please? No? Oh boy. I mean, or I guess I could... Oh, I, I do have my Louise Arthur. I don't know if he'll do enough damage, though. Berserker. Does anyone have, like, something good? Something AoE, maybe? No AoEs, just everyone has a single target Berserker set? That's great. I mean, normally I go with a Foreigner just so I could take out a Berserker, but the Berserker's the big fucking problem that I want to fucking one turn. I guess I'll go with, uh, Arthur. And I'm also gonna change out Sigurd's craft essence. I'm gonna give him Kaleidoscope. Cause, oh boy, is that gonna fucking help me a lot. Um, yeah, let me change over to... Yeah, true ether. Oh, let's go. Fo, 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 fo! We've never gone this fast before. It reminds me of the Arash Airlines flight, Master. I'm falling off, I'm falling off! I know you're about to black out, but please hang on. The Lamu's headed for the center of the Persian Gulf. That's probably where Tiamat is. If the Lamu drops the Holy Grail, they will never recover it. Even worse, if Tiamat wakes up from the Grail's magical energy. Don't worry, we'll catch up. We've got them in sight. Ketzel Kowaltus. Uh, Ketzel Kowaltus, this is the last push. Blast that Lamu with a plunge at max speed. Yes, we got it! It's falling down to the shore. Let's go finish it off. You go, Quetzalcoatl! Now's not the time to be charming, John. I just did what was necessary, yes. Lambu crashed on the beach. Now just finish it off and take the grail. Wait, what is the spirit origin reading? Quetzalcoatl, what's going on? Not possible! This wasn't how, how it was supposed to be. Mother created me to be the first of the new human race. That was why I destroyed Mesopotamia. That was why I did everything. Even without any experience, any memory, or any love in this body, I believed Mother had hopes for me. Gah! 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 Over there! He ran over there! Corner him! Capture him! Break him! Break the defect! This can't be. There was nothing. This land had nothing. I was expendable from the start. I was just a fake from the beginning. No future, no hopes, no will. Not even friends. I had nothing. The only thing I had was that I was Tiamat's only child. And that was the only thing I could cling to. Ah, found you. So this is where it ends. Just like the old humans. I can't believe it. I guess I wasn't anything special. Just like anything else, I can be hurt. Broken. If only I'd known. 
I wish I'd gone to see him one last time. You... saved me? Run. Now, Inkidu. Although, you may not be long, either. You're... the one they brought yesterday. But why? Why would you save me? Find happiness. Please find your happiness. Dearest friend, Enkidu. We people of Uruk will never forget our gratitude for you. You gave the Lone King a life. You led him to the path towards a great king. There was no one who did not grieve your death. No one forgot your death. I too, I too was so sad. That is why. Find happiness, Enkidu. Beautiful one of green. Ah, so glad. Thank you. I was able to tell you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what is this? I didn't even know you. How come I know your name and face, though? You thanking me. I don't have any right to receive your gratitude. <laughs> Another spirit origin detected. It's a servant. But this is... That is correct. You lot stand no chance against me. The Wandering Tales of Shana O, oh, Act 2. Usumidori, Steps of Heaven. G we were nearly there. Who are you? Guardian of Tiamat, Servant Ushiwakamaru. It can't be. Ushiwakamaru? The Holy Grail be delivered to Mother. You humans are not worthy of it. However, if you want to catch up to it, then I'll grant your wish. I'll bring your heads to the Black Sea with me. Just your heads. It's not Ushiwakamaru. That's not Ushiwakamaru, Mash! Her spirit origin signature and appearance may be the same, but everything else is different. It's the same way the Lamu changed. Don't hesitate, Mash, John. She's become one of Tiamat's children. Exactly. I've never felt better. Never felt more like myself from before. This blade is the voice of love and hate. I shall offer all of you to mother. So that's what happened when Ushiwakamaru was dropped into the Black Sea by Kingu. She was corrupted and transformed into one of Tiamat's children. And became a berserker class with a very annoying gimmick. Look at this shit. Starts off with max charge. Oh, and uh, every so, single turn, max it? charge. Yeah, fuck Ushiwakamaru. At least this Ushiwakamaru. Oh, makes me mad. What the fuck happens to you with overcharge, Arthur? Oh, oh, MP strength. Actually, yeah, I'll, I'll allow that then. Alright, so, yeah, U Ushi is the big fucking threat here, because she's gonna NP every turn, of course she's a fucking berserker, so, <laughs> you know. I was hoping more of those go to Sigurd, but oh well. Alright, so let's go Bulverka Graham, Excalibur, and... Buster card, because <laughs> we need to take out Ushiwakamaru as fast as possible. Best not to let this fight go on for too long. Especially when you have a Berserker Noble Phantasm in you every turn. I mean, at least the saving grace is that her Noble Phantasm is a single target. So, you know, that's always good. 
better like thank god she doesn't have an AOA, AOA. that would be a fucking nightmare right, I think with all the buffs we should at least take out Ushi maybe the Lamu as well Took her out. Nope, nope, not even fucking close, Jesus Christ. At least we have buffs and at least uh at least Sigurd has a has guts. Oh and she went after Arthur. Oh, it's only a single hit, and he lived. Yeah, sure, fuck it, okay. Why not? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna be mad about that. God, Arthur, your fucking noble phantasm is so weak. So, Alright. At least Dushi Wakamaru's down. Now let's let the Lamu, and that's gonna be pretty easy, I assume. I'm just glad the Lamu didn't fucking remove our buffs before, uh... Ushi Wakamaru and Bead. We would have fucking died. <laughs> Arthur would have died without those defense buffs. <laughs> Arthur might end up being a bit noble phantasm again. One of. Uh, you know what? Yes, so that. This will actually be guaranteed taking it out. Alright, that one wasn't awful. The next one is going to be much fucking worse, though. <laughs> Boy, I'm, I'm not looking forward to the next one at all. Alright, so this one's all Berserkers. Uh, pretty much same gimmick as last time. Let's see. Ooh, is this? Oh, 30%. No, that's not going to help me. Do I have any AoEs that are going to be at like 50%? I mean, really, at this point, anything will do. I have to remember that Shiki for later. Um, why do we have Valkyrie set? A single AoE Berserker. <laughs> Man. A, not good, but you know, 50% charge CE on the wood. Hmm. I don't see anyone's going to be helping out that much. Away. 
that should help. I'm gonna swap out Sigurd. Man, I knew there was a good reason I fucking trained a Barash. change my my equipment. I'm gonna go to Fragment of 2004, so that way I have NP Strength up. I'm gonna put that on a rash. So yeah, let's go with this. This can't possibly be that bad. I mean, I think they all only have 65,000. Ushiwakamaru has vanished, but now we can follow the Lamu. That's impossible. You're going to die here. She's back. No, wait. That's... That's right. Die here. Die like the insects you are. Those who survive on the battlefield. Those who forget it. Those who avoid the battlefield. Those who abandoned me there. All of them must die. I'll kill them. I'll kill you. I'll kill every single human. And then, you're a Tomo. That fool Yoshitsune. I'll rip the entire Genji clan apart! Multiple enemy servants detected. Doctor, what is this? She's multiplying, just like the Lamu. I don't think this new Ushi Ushiwakamaru can die. As long as a finger or a single strand of hair survives, a new Ush Ushiwakamaru will grow from it. This is the worst. There's nothing we can do. John, run! Even if you had a noble phantasm that could completely obliterate it, that thing won't stay dead. Because... Ushiwaku Maru's spirit or spirit origin signature is mixed in with the sea behind her. There's literally no end to this. I did tell you, I'm going to kill you. The only noble phantasm that can destroy this sea would be one capable of gathering all the magical energy of the entire era. In other words, only the light bands covering the heavens can rival Mother now. Do any of you have such a powerful noble phantasm? Funny you should say that, yes. You know, we just might. But well, first... I cannot forgive the way you make John and Mash suffer. Before I bring out the big guns, I'm going to smash your face in with my Makana, yes. Shut up, false goddess. I shall smash that pathetic wooden sword of yours to pieces. Alright, so, you guys remember the Ushiwaka Madru from last fight? The good point, the good part of this fight is she only has 65,000 health. The bad part is that there's five of her and they all have their noble phantasm charged up to max every single turn. Oh, never mind, there's six of her. <laughs> uh, fucking kill me now. Boy, I hope this is gonna fucking work. I mean, I think it should. I mean, with the attack up from the buster chain. Stella? Yes! Oh, why did I underestimate her ash? <laughs> Alright, that's three down. Oh, uh, you, you, you did good work, buddy. Alright, th three Ushis left. Hopefully, Karna should be able to do this. Again, I can do the same thing with a Buster Chain to increase his attack. So let's see what happens. Hmm. Nope. Actually, I think Oh, of course. Okay, well, one, one left. With eight, 81 health. Fucking. God damn it, Karna. <sighs> All 
Alright, not dead. And that's for, of course, one whole turn. Oh wait, can I? Good. That'll buy me a fucking turn at least. Okay, good. She didn't evade again, so. It's over. It's fucking 81 health. God damn it, Karna. <laughs> Alright, that takes care of. Alright, you know, these weren't as bad as I thought they would be. Man, fu <laughs> fucking Arash. I'm so glad I, I... I'm really happy I decided to level him up now, because holy shit. <laughs> Perhaps you really weren't all talk. But you can't win. While we fought, the Grail was delivered to Mother. We couldn't stop it. Yes, we failed. We couldn't get past Ushiwakamaru. A huge number of Lamu has appeared again. So, so many. Uruk isn't, a, isn't in any state to handle this many. So it's begun, huh? I must go then. I don't want to run out of things to kill. Now, should I destroy Uruk while its people try to fortify its little walls, or play with the refugees trying to escape beyond the northern wall? Either way, I'm abandoning this body. I have no interest in clinging to something so wounded. Farewell, survivors of Chaldea. I commend your efforts in slaying me. Hollow victory though it is, death no longer holds meaning for me. Let's head back to Uruk, Master. Even if we don't make it in time, we can't just stay here. Mash, you need to calm down. You're right, but holding my hand like that is helping. Yes, that's a good idea. I agree with John. And I'm sorry. I failed to stop the Lamu from escaping. No, it's not your fault. Nobody could have predicted something like that would happen. More importantly, we need to do what John said and head for the observation point. It's an emergency, but that doesn't mean we can't run around blindly. First, we need to know what's going on. And we need to rest, e if even only for a few minutes. You've been fighting this whole time. I will at least get these two some rest in a room with a roof. Yes, of course. Good idea, Doctor, yes. First, let's eat. Eat. Like the great Lucha announcers say, you can't get in the ring on an empty stomach, yes. Alright, this one's only story, so... You're late, Chaldeans! What happened? Tell me everything! King Gilgamesh! What is this? Is he ripping off the doctor? I'm not ripping anyone off. I was inspired. Why do you think I went to the observation post last time? I made a communication system for this very moment. Wow, what is this? I can see them, meow. Hey, Cuckoo, I'm right here. What's going on over there? Everything's in chaos here. Those Lamu attacked again. This time, amazingly, we're kind of holding them off. His Majesty rolled out these big bows on the castle walls. 360 of them. Obviously, I prepared enough to repel an attack from any direction. They can hold off the Lamus for an hour or so. But, the soldiers won't last any longer than that, nor will my magical energy. That's all I have to report. Now what about you fools? Tiamat's got the grail. We're boned. What are you people doing? What happened at Eridu? Hey, calm down, Gilgamesh. Listen, Kingu's heart was the Grail. Tiamat was using the Grail as a power source to control what was left of Enkidu. Then Alamu took the Grail and threw it into the center of the Persian Gulf, which is where we are now. 
It's all my fault. Quetzalcoatl did it. Does that settle it? That's a, I think that settles it, right? Great, then we're done talking about it forever. So do you have a plan? I'm open to ideas right now. Even yours. I see. That was succinct, Quetzalcoatl. Now let me tell you what I think. First, we got the results from the water analysis. The black seawater is Tiamat's authority itself. It infects those who touch it, and Tiamat's authority is copied into their cells and makes them into her slaves. The Lama were born from the mud of Tiamat. They probably aren't affected by it. But anyone else, servant or human, that touches the black mud will be absorbed by Tiamat. I see, so don't touch it, and if you have to touch it, touch as little as possible to protect yourself, meow. That's right. Mother, I mean, Tiamat's authority includes self-modification, multiplication, and biofusion. But her most powerful one is the amino, amino, ge geash, amino geish, or cell compulsion. Once they're inside that mud, it will darken any servant. Ishtar, you're here! Yes, I'm sorry I'm late, but I got Eridu back on its feet. The people are evacuated to the basement of Eridu's ziggurat, instead of heading to Uruk. They can hole up in there for a day. Even Lamu can't break in there easily. A darkening mud, you say? I've never seen it, but what an annoying concept to deal with. Whatever. Second, the observation post not only recorded the water quality, but also the height of the water and waves. They observed an unusual water level. The moment the grail was stolen from me, the water level started to rise by the minute. By my calculations, the, the, po the observation post will be swallowed in three hours. And the Black Sea will overflow onto land. What we're going to see is something even worse than the Great Flood that once destroyed Mesopotamia. It'll be a Black Sea of mud that turns all life it touches into monsters. If that happens, Uruk and all of human history are finished! If Mesopotamia, the great civilization and basis for urban societies, turn into a world of monsters, the foundation of humanity will collapse! We won't let that happen. Doctor, give us a plan. Do you have one? You have one, right? I do. I do, but this is... It doesn't matter. Tell me. At the very least, I'll listen. Oh, fine, I'll tell you. I just observed a spirit origin signature at the center of the Persian Gulf. It's a holy grail with an ultra, ultra, ultra class magical reactor core, with more than seven times the magical energy of a grail. There's no doubt that this is the primordial demonic beast who birthed the world of Mesopotamia. The spirit origin belongs to Tiamat. If this calamity, this sea is Tiamat's authority, our only solution is to defeat Tiamat herself. Whoa. I figure this atmospheric shaking was the after effect of Mother coming to the surface. It may be that slaying Tiamat and destroying her spirit origin would stop the mud. But is that possible? She's on a completely different level than the demon gods you fought before. Are you willing to do it anyway, John? I'm ready. Well said. I will work with that plan, then. I can't send you reinforcements, but don't worry about Uruk. Bring me Tiamat's head! That means my winged serpents will be our mounts. If only we had a flying golden ship. That would sure be nice. <laughs> so we'll approach with the serpents. Um, I think Senpai should command from here. There's a risk that the water could touch you during the combat, and if you were to fall into the sea... Impossible. How can servants win without a master? The further a servant is from their master, the less efficient the magical energy transfer, and you'll need the command spells too. Mash, the time to prioritize your master's safety over all else is long past. Right, John? Hmm. That's right. Master John, I'm sending you out knowing the danger. Then it's decided. John is coming even though even we have to chain them to a flying serpent. The problem is what to do in the Lamu attack en route. I'll be okay, but what about the others? You'll have to use the combat tactic Jaguar Warrior suggested. Put up a barrier of magical energy on your feet and fight atop the water. An experienced servant can do that easily. What about you, Mash? Have you ever done that? I haven't, but I'll do my best. If there's any trick to it, please let me know. <laughs> there's no time, fool. But it's the king's duty to aid cur such courage in a time of need. 
I thought this might happen, so I hit a water-repelling talisman in the observation post. I call it a water strider. If it's just you, it should keep the water away so you won't fall in. You're pretty handy, aren't you? Are you sure you're not better suited as a mage than you are a warrior? <laughs> I'm ready for any situation. Well, maybe not lancers. <laughs> or in this state, riders. Go then, Ma Go then, John of Chaldea, Mash, and the survivors of the Three Stooge Goddess Alliance. Your enemy is the primordial creature called Tiamat, the one who births the Lamu, the very source of demonic beasts. Alright, we're heading out. Oh, this looks like a fucking mess. Lancers, riders, assassins, and... Ugh. I think it's best that we just bring a saber, honestly. I'll bring Sigurd. Uh, let me swap his CE out for something that's going to be useful here. Uh, yeah, where's Demon King of the Six Heaven? You know, I'm actually going to swap some stuff around. I'll put... No, not Emmy. I want a Lancer. Karna. I'll put Karna in. I'll give him... Yeah, I'll give him Imaginary Element. Just in case I need to blast a wave. And I'll change my uh, equipment back to the combat suit. So I can order swap Karna and uh, Nero Bride. Because I think it's going to be like two waves of, like, demon beasts, and then Lamus. More and more Lamu are surfacing. We need to stop this unending demonic beast factory fast. They're not responding to us. They must have dull senses right when they come out of the water. They're only capable of carrying out simple orders like go to the surface or kill the old humans. But that's just for now. As time passes, their consciousness will synchronize with the others, and they'll be like the ones we saw at Eridu. Sheesh, they finally grow up and gain indiv indiv individuality, but then they go back to a colony. All our efforts were for nothing. Those things aren't the new humanity. They're just soulless tools. In the name of the goddess, me. I will destroy them all, yes. Everyone there here. Multiple enemies. Lamu and demonic beasts. We're almost offshore. Take them out quickly. <sighs> All right, uh, I mean, this first one's not too bad. Actually, I might as well have Karna take out the fucking, uh, Musmaku first. Well, if we can, anyway. Uh, so second wave though. Since there's only one archer here, I'll wait before I do anything. Oh yeah, his card has got this. All right, the archer's gone, and we got a gold drop from it. Of course, you get, of course, you fucking deadly poisoned yourself. Why wouldn't you? Honestly, the one thing I have to look out for is uh. Waver gets sure fucked up by that Aridamu. Alright, so now it's just the Aridamu. Get some NPs charged up too. Alright, one more turn, I'll take out that Aridamo. Get the threat create up. Alright, that wasn't too bad. And yeah, you know what? Just to get Sigurd his NP. Go for the overkill bonus. Ooh, and crit, nice. Alcarna NP this turn. Yeah, because we have an Usmagalu and, and an Ugalu. Ooh. This is gonna fucking suck. Yeah, the Usmagalu is the bigger threat, so I'll focus on taking that thing out first. 
能力使用リーナーしスキルことなし命令とはよっ I doubt Vasavi Shakti is going to do much damage to them, but I mean, hey, it's worth a shot. Oh, that didn't do fucking jack shit. Why did I think Brain Carnival was good? I should have. Alright, thank God for those crit boosters. Good Lord, Sigurd. I love you. I need a single crit. Yeah, it's about time to start going after waiver. Shot up. Oh. Carnage probably gonna die this turn. So let's go oh, Arts Quick sure, Buster oh. for Sigurd. He seems to be our main damage dealer in this. And thousand left on the Ugalu. Karn is dead. Alright, that brings in your bride. Okay, and I'll finish. I'll just finish oh, this off with a sacred okay. chain. Oh. That that's gonna be a guaranteed kill. All right. Now it's Lamo. Two Lamo. Well, I know we can take out one of them at least. Defense down, we should be able to take out one of them. I should have used Nero's attack buff too. Oh well. I, I think Sigurd could take this thing out in one go. And then just save that crit buster card for uh, the next one. Or maybe not. Nope. Well, we'll at least kill one. And just cool. went straight for waiver. <laughs> Alright, good. Another Nero chain to finish this thing off. Not bad. Alright. 
Oh, not, not awful. Could have gone a little better, I think. But I'll take it. Here's the one where we're fighting Tiamat. Oh, you're single target, right? Would be nicer if I had a multi saber. over to uh, True Ether. All right. Abnormal Spirit Origin confirmed. It's here, 200 meters from contact. You should be able to see it. The source of this abnormality is at the ocean's surface. Uh... A song? Enemy confirmed on the ocean's surface. But that... Is that really... That's Tiamat? Really? So beautiful. And melancholy. She doesn't seem anything like the mother of demonic beasts. Yes, I've never seen her before myself, but... Those big horns symbolize land and her eyes reflect the stars of the inner sea. That is the goddess of creation, Tiamat. No doubt about it. Her womb was the soil of life itself. Then it was cast away after filling its purpose of creation. In myths, they say she was killed by the gods, but in reality things were slightly different. She was abandoned. She was abandoned by the entire world, by all the children she brought forth. After the planet's environment settled and life was established, she was deemed unnecessary and exiled. She wasn't sent to the old world that lies underneath, but to the reverse side, to the lifeless world of the Void. Right. For the primates who gained the phylogenetic tree, she was too dangerous because she had the potential to create another world entirely. The fear was the foundation built with great pains would get mic- uh, The fear was the foundation built with great pains would get mixed with the next world's foundation. So they sealed her off, in infinitely. And now she has returned. Whether the Mage King pulled her out of the world of the Void or if it was humanity itself that called her forth. In either case, she should no longer belong on this planet. We need her to enter a deep slumber once more. We need her to, but... But it looks like a seal's been placed on her. Her limbs are bound together. She just woke up. No, that's not it. Is this why the Lamu brought her the Holy Grail? It doesn't look like she's noticed us, so maybe we can just take her down while she's bound? I have visual confirmation of Tiamat here, too. This is your chance. Her limbs are still immobile. She's completely sealed. Only her torso and head are free. We can't hesitate. Uruk is in danger. Yes, enemy target Tiamat. Commencing the final battle of the Singu- Ah! Oh. My body! I can't move! The magical energy within Tiamat is surging. No, something's happening! She's putting out as much energy as a hydrogen bomb. If she fires, Uruk will get blasted even from that distance. Don't let her shoot, John. Defeat her before she makes her move. There's no time. Commencing attack! Alright, time to fight Tiamat. Advent Beast, 
evil of humanity. First time, and definitely not the last time we'll see that. If you want, you can just focus on getting rid of the Lamu, because no matter what, Femme Fatale Tiamat over here will not attack you. Instead, what she does is every turn she'll debuff uh, your party and the enemy. Take, take that as you will. E everyone gets the same debuffs. Things like debuff, de debuff resist down, healing gain down, all that nice stuff. Oh, and NP seal too, and attack down. What fun. <laughs> One up. One up. Yeah. All right. Oh, an MP strength down. That's not last for a single turn, right? Buff resist down. Buff chance down. Oh, five turns MP strength down. Ugh. Oh, these Lombies are going to be a pain in the ass thanks to that. He's the fucking skill suit on the last one turn. She's in like a cycle of which one goes. Alright, so let's... Oh. Surprised both of those fucking landed. Let's just take out the Lombu first, honestly. And this is gonna do up that much damage because we have our uh, uh, MP strain down. But hey, you know. Alright, that's a really good chunk to the Lamu. Full Verka Ground will definitely take this one out. And now we just have to deal with uh, Tima. Which really shouldn't be all that difficult. Considering he does not attack. I'm just glad there's no bullshit. Like, there's an infinite, uh, what is it? Like, wave of TM, of, uh, fucking, uh, you know, of Lamu that swarm you while you try to do this. Now it's pretty straightforward. It's gonna be pretty impossible for us to lose at this point. Oh. That's why it's good taking out those fucking Lamu first. Four stars. Can you apply this to yourself? Hey, it actually works. Not too shabby. Hopefully, it, you actually crit. Yeah. All right. Well, we got one. いいですね。はい。お任せよ。はい。
Literally no point in doing that, but <laughs> you know, hey, why not? Might as well get a little bit of MP. Remember how many MP strength and attack downs I actually have on myself now? Man, what I wouldn't give for a fucking debuff clan. <laughs> this is not going to do much damage, I can tell. <laughs> I can already feel it. Uh, definitely not the damage I need. Twenty-seven thousand. Eh, well at least it's damage. Oh, my game lagged all of a sudden. That was weird. Alright, we can pull Verko Graham her next turn. Never mind, we can't. <laughs> Since she fucking MP sealed me, fucking bitch. What the fuck is going on? Why is this lagging so much? What the shit? What the hell's going on here? My my, my emulator alright? What the fuck? Why is it? I am very confused. It's never done this before. Alright, that did it. Oh, ten void ash. Amazing, you did it! Confirming collapse of Tiamat's spirit origin. The magical reactor is also stopped. Your attacks defeated Tiamat, mud and all. Now just wait for the ocean to return to normal, retrieve the gra grail, and mission, com mission accomplished. We did it, Mash. Um, Senpai? I had this feeling during the battle with Tiamat. But perhaps those restraints that tied her down... I think she made them herself. Tiamat was binding herself? I can't be positive about this, but that's the only logical explanation. I mean, Tiamat was... Well... She was voluntarily taking our attacks. As if she was giving us her life. We simply couldn't comprehend her intent. It seems that Tiamat was awakened by the power of the Holy Grail. But perhaps if the Lamu hadn't delivered the Holy Grail, she would have stayed in the ocean forever? Mash, even if that's true, wouldn't change anything. No, Tiamat's mere existence is a threat to humanity. Whether she was dragged up by the Mage King or Lord out, we had to defeat her the moment she came to this world. Doctor, what's going on? Confirming reconstruction of spirit origin. No. Transformation into a megastructure post-dispersion, increasing scale. Impossible. Can there be such a creature? This is no longer a living being. This... this is... Water levels of the Persian Gulf are rising again. First wave reaching the coast in five, four, three. Observation posts submerged. The tidal wave was directed and it's heading farther onto land. This is deliberate. It's planned to head straight to Uruk and swallow it all up. Wait, seriously? Can't we stop it? Didn't we defeat Tiamat? 
Yeah, but we just made a huge mistake. What we defeated was just its brain. Everyone leave that airspace immediately. The real thing is surfacing from below. Uh-oh. Truly a monster. A mobile creature factory. She has enough magical energy to travel between stars. She has ample life origins stored within her body. Humanity needs a few more centuries to reach this divine arc. This is... This is the Tiamat's true form! She's not even looking at us. She's glaring straight ahead towards Uruk. Looks like we're being spared for now. What should we do? Quetzalcoatl, what do you think? We absolutely can't win. Nope. I mean, the difference in size is mind-blowing, no? I can't use a joint lock on her. The most powerful move in Lucha. Of course not. See, nice response, John. A sense of humor is important. Quetzalcoatl, are you saying you can't defeat Noble- You can't even defeat- You can't defeat Tiamat even with your real Noble Phantasm? Even with your full-powered authority? No. It'd be cruel to get your hopes up, so I'll be blunt. Even with Ishtar's authority, or with any other power currently left in Mesopotamia, we can't so much as scratch Tiamat. I see. Thanks. I get the situation now. John, retreat. Return to Uruk immediately and rejoin King Gilgamesh. Now that the situation is so far beyond us, we need to consolidate our forces. Okay. Good answer. You haven't been disheartened yet. Then surely we still have some options left. Whoa, oh, Tiamat's advancing? She can move with all that weight in that giant body? Second wave incoming. Oh no, its momentum will carry it straight to Uruk. Man, we made a big fucking mistake. Oh boy. Man, fucking look at this map now. Then we'll finish off this section. Echo confirmed from observation from observation post three. The black mud swallowed Gearsu City and is flowing towards Uma and Uruk. This isn't a wave. They're like flames flaring up. The walls of Uma City can't withstand it. Estimated time of arrival. I don't care. Raise the anchors. Deploy the fangs of Napishtim. Yes, sir. Send signals by reflections. Deploy the fangs. Fangs of Napishtim successfully deployed and managed to divert the black mud. However, it's badly damaged after firing. Doesn't look like it can block the next wave. Figures, but we have no choice. Start the repair work at once. No need to return it to perfect shape. Maintain its framework, if nothing else. That will stop it for a while. Yes, my king. The time has finally come. I have been awaiting this moment with bitter anticipation for six months. Tiamat, the mother of all beasts. What's beyond this mythical battle is something even I cannot foresee. Will you swallow the world, or will humanity be worthy of flourishing? It's time to see that question answered. Let the final battle of the Age of Gods begin! I think since the next section is all story, I might as well do that one now. Ooh, two Saint Courts! Star of the beginning, we look up at the sky. Yeah, wow, after this we have two combat sections left and that's it. We're almost done with Babylonia, guys. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. Oh, it feels so nice. I'm so close. 
So you're back, John. Let's begin the briefing. First, the soldiers report. Yes, my king. Currently, there are 306 citizens left in Uruk. Of those, 212 are soldiers, and the rest are civilians. Initially, the citizens refused to evacuate. But after the king spoke to them, they agreed to evacuate to the Northern Wall. Of the citizens who already escaped to the Northern Wall, there are 157 survivors. After this afternoon's Lamu attack, there are now 38 surviving soldiers. Altogether, there are 500 humans left alive in Sumer. Huh? 500? That's all? I'm sorry, that report must be mistaken, right? No, it's correct. Between the two Lamu attacks and the sea encroachment, the first dynasty of Uruk has fallen. Even if we make it through this predicament, the kingdom cannot be maintained. It would only go into decline. What? Do not despair. Even if we, if we perish, as long as Sumerian culture survives, there will be others who follow in our footsteps. As for the Lamu, they have split into two groups. One group stops on the spot and turns into a sphere as soon as the sun sets. The other flies back to Tiamat and guards her surroundings. So, Roma so Romani Archimon, you've had almost half a day. I presume you're finished with your analysis of Tiamat. Of course. Tiamat's specs and abilities are exactly as stated in the report I submitted to you. John, you should also take a look at it later. The material data on the terminal over there has been updated. I see. This is good work. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hmm. Curse it! Are you on Tiamat's side or something? There's nothing in here about her weaknesses! Believe me, I wanted to write at least one possible method of attack, but the report is accurate. She's just perfect with no physical or mythical shortcomings. We're no match for her! When you say that with tears in your eyes, I suppose I can't be too hard on you. Good work. You can return to your post. But we can't lose control of our emotions here. Well, Jaguar Warrior, what's your take on Tiamat? She was huge, gigantic, and positively awesome. Nonsense, I'm not asking for your idiotic human impressions of her. Use your animal instincts to tell me something useful. Oh, you mean that. At her speed, she'll reach the coast in half a day. I'm guessing it'll take her about a day to get from there to Uruk. <laughs> that is fast. All we can do is intercept her. Is Tiamat heading straight for Uruk? Because these city and Gilgamesh are the symbols of Sumerian civilization. Tiamat sees things differently than you or I. Yes, to her, humans and the land are all a single life form. Tiamat is after Uruk, the heart of this land, driven by her primordial instincts. So that's why she's ignoring my temple. Even if Mount Ebbe disappears, civilization will carry on. But if Uruk and this golden dummy are annihilated here, Mesopotamian civilization itself will vanish. That's right. If you wish to protect human history, you have to stop Tiamat at all costs. But... No attacks work on Tiamat. I tried to create an opportunity, but I didn't think she would be quite so enormous. We can neither stop her nor drive her back. Why is Tiamat invincible anyway? Oh, at that point, I do have a theory. Tiamat... Actually, I believe all of the beasts have individual differences. Of all of them, Tiamat's inborn nature is to never experience death. No matter what she does, death will never find her. John destroying Tiamat's brain out at sea more or less proved the theory. So she regenerated after she died. Isn't that just resurrection? No, it's different. It's more retrogression than, re than regeneration. I know this sounds absurd, but stay with me. Tiamat is the mother of all life in existence. The very fact that we're alive proves her existence. That's why there's no way to destroy her. It's paradoxical, but as long as life continues to exist on land, Tiamat, Beast 2, will never die. She is the beginning and the end. The only way she could be affected by the normal laws of physics and be harmed is as the last thing on the world to die. But we definitely can't beat her! I mean, there's no point! To defeat Tiamat, first the human race would need to... All life on Earth would have to die out. That's right. That's why I had no choice but to report that she's invincible. So then, what about the opposite? Exactly. Brazen of you to think as I do. 
Ereshkigal! Ereshkigal! Ereshkigal, are you there? Shush, be more respectful when you're trying to call a goddess. I've been busy taking care of souls since yesterday. I would even take a dead man's help at this point. First of all, I didn't lend you the mirror of curse so you, could not, so you and I could chat. It was just an apology for everything I've done. Hello. Oh, it's... Give me a moment. <clears throat> Ereshkigal, goddess of the underworld, is here in all her splendor. Do you have business with me, king of Uruk? Ereshkigal, you're being so formal all of a sudden. Oh, you're much prettier than the celestial goddess. It looks like some soul-searching in the underworld hasn't made you more ladylike. Why are you looking at me, Goldie? And stop smiling at her, John. You're embarrassing me, to, to, me two times over. The fact of the matter is, I called you here to ask a favor. Currently, Tiamat is heading for Uruk. She will arrive in two days. If we don't defeat her, Mesopotamia will fall. However, Tiamat will not die as long as there is life on Earth. Therefore, Mistress of the Underworld, I want you to attend to Tiamat. If death cannot touch her in a world full of life, then send her down to a world devoid of life. In the Underworld, wouldn't she be the last living thing? That's a good point. Huh? What are you talking about? Summon Mother to my Underworld? Wait, did you say send? You seriously said send, you seriously said send her down. Of course! Ereshkigal, Goddess of Kerr, in the name of the King, I command you. Open the gate of the Underworld across all of Uruk and bind the beast of disaster that calls itself Tiamat down into the bowels of the earth. That is your role after wreaking havoc with, with the Three Goddess Alliance. Consider that to be your atonement. <laughs> What's impossible is impossible, and that's impossible. Are you telling me to bring the Underworld directly beneath Uruk? How do you expect me to do something so ridiculous? I guess I have no choice. Then you'll do it? Uh, well, yes. After all, if I don't, Mesopotamia will be wiped out, right? I've been listening all this time, ever since you returned to the surface. All the time, actually. So I know what King Gilgamesh is talking about. To be honest, I was even a little impressed. I knew it! I knew the Underworld was the way to go! Ishtar, you should do some soul-searching so you can be less useless. But, being convinced are, in doing it are two different things, Gilgamesh. Do you really think that covering the entirety of Uruk with a hole of death is a simple task, even for me? Just, do just doing it in my jurisdiction of Kutha City was a major undertaking. As big as Uruk is, it will probably take me at least ten years. What? Ten years? We don't have that kind of time! Well, actually... Um, since I hate Uruk, I might have been plotting something the whole time. So give me three days and it'll be ready. Nice one, Ereshkigal. You think so? Then it was worth cursing every night. <laughs> Brilliant, Ereshkigal. But you and I need to chat a little more later. If we can manage to drop Tiamat into the underworld, then defeating her may not be impossible. But what are we going to do about the time issue? Tiamat will arrive here in Uruk in two days. Ereshkigal needs three days to prepare the gate to the underworld. If we defeat Tiamat after Uruk falls, we won't be able to repair the, the collapse of the Foundation of Humanity. You people have to deal with that. My hands are full preparing the gate. Two days. Or even one day. We need to hold Tiamat off at least that long. But how? The axe of Marduk is broken. Fear not. I already see a strategy for victory. Here is a chance for Ishtar to actually be useful. Hmm? Why me? Oh, I see. With Ishtar, certainly. Oh, that's right, yes. It'll be a cinch with Ishtar, yes. So that's how we'll do it. You're amazing, Ishtar. Yes, it's just like Merlin said. That's our Ishtar. Not that Ishtar herself is all that. And on spoiled her rotten. I'm so much more amazing because I can set up an underworld gate. <laughs> oh, Resh. <laughs> You're just playing dumb. What a nice way of showing us the ace up your sleeve. But enough of that. Come now. Call on Gugulana. Get. 
Yes, Gugalana, the Bull of Heaven, who serves Ishtar. It's said to be as big as a mountain and Sumer's greatest holy beast. I bet Gugalana can stop Tiamat in her tracks. Ah, uh, yes, of course. That's right. With my Gugalana, yes. In its heyday, Gugalana could even make the Tig Tigris River run dry. I heard about that from the people of Ur, yes. They all say Ishtar's servant Gugalana is a holy beast to be feared. They praised you too, Ishtar, yes. A holy beast that none other, none of the other gods could tame. But I hear that you managed to bring it to heel first by being strict, then by being more strict. Yes, that's right. Gugalana is like my, um, vehicle. But everyone, I think you're making too big a deal out of it. Google Honor isn't really all that great. It wouldn't be of any use against Tiamat. Google Honor! Google Honor! <laughs> What's the matter? You don't look well. Normally, we'd all have to listen to your irritating high-pitched laughter while you brag about how great he is, even though it's not yours originally. No. Don't tell me. No, I don't have Gugalana. What did you just say? I don't have it. I lost it. I lost it somewhere. I think it was in the north, but I couldn't find it anywhere. I even searched all through Babylon, but I just couldn't find hide nor hair of Gugalana. <laughs> Speechless. You stupid, useless, bratty goddess! Why do we even bother recruiting you? Oh, Ishtar. <laughs> Made to stand holding a clay tap and then reads for his goddess. <laughs> I think this has to be my favorite line in the singularity. <laughs> I just love it so much. <laughs> well, this is just perfect. And right when we were one step away from having a workable plan. Now we're up against a wall. All of us at Chaldea want to agree on the strategy of using T of luring Tiamat to Uruk and then sending her to the underworld. But there just aren't enough. There just isn't enough time. You could go up against Tiamat and just accept that you die or get swallowed up by the mud, but then we'd be even worse off. Made to stand like that when the reach for goddess. Fine. Adjourned. This war council is taking a break. Whining will do us no good. We have no plan, but hastiness is also the height of folly. And John is exhausted. Let us rest our weary bones here. King Gilgamesh? There isn't much time until dawn. This will be our last chance to relax in Uruk. Everyone replenish your, en your energy. But don't stop thinking. We are not going to sleep and just give up. We're going to get through tonight so we can survive tomorrow. Hmm. Oh, profile of team has been updated. Spirit origin list has been updated. All right. Hey, I dropped in to say hi, John. So this is the famous Caldea Embassy. I'm a bit surprised, yes. Yup, yup. I was imagining someplace more like a polis, but I like it. It seems homey. By the, <clears throat> by the way, when's dinner? I'm expecting something like a warm Caldean family meal. If you're hungry, Jaguar, I'll happily make you something. Yes. How about rocks topped with salt? That's just rock salt. Damn it! So I gotta cook. I gotta cook my own meat then. What brings you here, Quetzalcoatl? What else? It was your scent, of course, John. Well, to tell you the truth, I had nowhere else to go. Most everyone is dead. And to the surviving Uruks, Jaguar and I were enemy goddesses, no? I don't want to make them uneasy on their last night. So, let me stay here, okay? Foe, foe! Quetzalcoatl... Did you know about Tiamat? 
Oh, you mean the cylinder seal I showed you about at Eridu? Yes, I knew about Tiamat. And that Gorgon had synchronized with her consciousness, and had convinced herself that she was Tiamat's second coming. But I was a bad goddess, so I couldn't tell you or Gorgon the truth, no. I wanted to be Gorgon's friend, though. That cylinder was the most I could tell you. It was my way of saying, be careful, there's more to come. You didn't tell us for Gorgon's sake? Well... Yes. For that one time I was on Gorgon's side, not humanity's. I wanted you, you know, all of humanity, to truly hate her. I wanted you all to go up against her with everything you had. If you'd known Gorgon was a fake and the true threat lay behind her, you would have pitied her and taken her lightly. I didn't want that to happen, so that's why I couldn't just come out and tell you. Well, you found me out anyway, huh, John? Pathetic, no? Thanks. For Gorgon's sake, too. No, thank you. For staying with her until the end. Never mind, I can't get all mushy, no. Food's ready. Lamb with rock salt, cooked jaguar style. So, what are we talking about? Let me join in. We figuring out how to run away tomorrow? Yes, we were saying that if we sacrifice the goddess, we might be able to stop Tiamat. Here, have my meat. We can get we can't get you nice and plump if you're hungry. Seriously? It's been six centuries when Cuckoo's been nice to me. Wait, did I get killed around then? Well, whatever. I'm sure it's fine. If my life can save you, that's fine with me. Is this what Stockholm Syndrome looks like? Huh? No way! Cuckoo and I are rivals. Our lives are of equal worth. If I die and Cuckoo survives, that's okay. If Cuckoo dies and I survive, that's perfectly fine. That's our relationship. Since we can't be together, we keep things balanced that way. If the good god is strong, people turn good. When an evil god is strong, they turn evil. We can never both be successful, no. So it's rare for us to be in a situation like this. It's strange that Jaguar and I both want the same thing. This never happened in the myths. No, it's not the same. I only thought of defeating Cuckoo. But Cuckoo's different. This time around, everything she's been doing is to save humans. So why did you join the Three Goddess Alliance? I already told you. I enjoy fight- I enjoy fighting. So I joined the Alliance so I could kill human- That's a lie. Cuckoo joined so she could stop the other goddesses. I mean, those goddesses weren't the sort to stop after just a firm talking to. The plan was to get the Uru Grail first so she could stop them from exterminating all humanity. Kotal was a good big sister. That's not fair. I wasn't able to be a good big sister. But I did do my best, yes. If I get another chance, I want to try to get along with Gorgon better. Ishtar? Were you resting? Yes, I was enjoying the night breeze while I watched what's become of Uruk. What about you, Mash? Why aren't you with John? Senpai's at the embassy. He wants to clean his room one last time. <laughs> what? That's silly. That's so like him. By this time tomorrow, either Uruk will be gone or you'll have beaten Tiamat and be heading back to your own era. That's... No, I can't say for sure. But I don't think Senpai is thinking about Uruk being destroyed. I don't think he's sad about leaving, either. It's probably just a natural gesture to show gratitude. We've stayed in this town longer than any other before. So it's not about getting attached. It's just something normal for a human to do. You two must have gone through a whole lot of goodbyes. You don't see them as something to mourn. Goodbyes are always going to come. You can't get through life if they make you sad all the time. So you send them off with as much appreciation as you can and rejoice in the fact that you met, and that you lived to say goodbye. Your order is a good journey. I finally understand why Gilgamesh is so nice to you. Th thank you, but... Um, was King Gilgamesh being... nice? That was nice? Wow, ignorance is scary. I mean, right now he's acting weirdly like a wise king. But he was never the kind of person to make a plan that relies on other people. 
He's a brutal person at his core. He'll kill without a second thought, without the slightest regard for someone's circumstances or feelings. This time he's been playing the good-natured king. When it's time to fight an opponent like Mother, I guess he turns into a proper hero. It reminds me of when he was having fun with Enkidu. He was, well, you know, pretty cool back then? Just like in your legends. I see. But I think this King Gilgamesh is a man you can rely on. He's got nothing left to lose now. Guess it's true that when the chips are down, people show who they really are. You and John are like that too. Oh, no, you're a little different. I mean, you're scared of fighting, right? You're still not used to killing or people trying to kill you. That's right. I've been told that before, but... I don't let it bother me anymore. I once spoke with a certain servant in a place like this, who told me something. There's nothing to be ashamed of in fearing battle. It's about taking lives. Of course, it's scary. Just as some people are more suited to certain weapons, there are those who are more suited to certain approaches to fighting. Mash, you are not the type who can swallow fear during a fight, or get used to it. That fear will follow you your entire life. I know, but I want to conquer that fear. At this rate, I'll never be useful to Master. Excuse me. Haha, <laughs> I got a little overheated. Tomorrow's the day we save Nipur. My fighting spirit is already soaring. Anyway, back to what I was saying. You're not the type who can forget fear. You are the type who uses her courage to hold back the fear. That's the type of warrior who I trust and respect. Hold back fear with courage? Um, are you that way too, Leonidas? <laughs> Unfortunately, I fear only the dead. I am a king, after all. I've been trained since a very young age to not feel fear in battle. Oh, I'm sorry. It's none of my business. No, it's fine. It's true that I don't feel fear in battle. But I always feared going into battle, leaving my country behind, even to protect it. When I thought of the lives I was leaving behind, I gripped my spear so tightly I could crush it. The worst of all was at Thermopylae. The Persian enemy had 100,000 soldiers, and we only had 300 Spartans. We were just a tiny part of the 7,000-strong Greek alliance. If we fought, we would be destroyed, but we were told if we surrendered and allowed the Persians to pass, they would spare Sparta. Sparta was just a waypoint on their journey. Their true target was Athens, you see. But if we failed to stop them, Athens was doomed. It could only be for a single day, or perhaps a few more, but our tiny resistance could perhaps grave the sa save the great kingdom of Athens. To choose faith or to choose life, I didn't know which was right, and I felt a fear great and I felt a fear greater than ever before. To leave my wife and child for certain death, I was beyond fear during. I was beyond fearing my own death, but I was not used to fearing for my family's future. But you went to war anyway. And somehow you held back the hundred thousand Persian soldiers for several days with only a few hundred, and died. Was that because you went into the battle afraid? No. I only went to battle when I conquered my fear. I was given a divine message, Mash. In my uncertainty, I prayed for guidance from the gods, and I received it. If you go to war, you will never return to Sparta, I was told. That rid me of my uncertainty. I knew I'd be, I would be able to fight like before, without hesitation or fear. Why? Even though you were told you would not come back? I was not told that it would be meaningless to fight, and that meant ev that even if we lost, Sparta would not fall. We would not return from the battlefield, but those deaths would have meaning. I realized that even if we never came back, our battle was going to protect those who would come later. And then I finally realized. It gave me the strength not to swallow my fear, but to replace it with hope. I bragged about this to my comrades. Bet you didn't know that, did you? I said. Everybody but you has been doing that this whole time. You're impressing no one. <laughs> All 300 of us started laughing. I really was a bit of a dolt. 
Until that last battle, I'd never realized the source of my comrade's strength. No. At the very last moment, I was finally able to realize. If we, if I caused a miracle at the hot gates, it was thanks to that. Listen to me, Mash Kirlite. The reason you fear battle is because you know many things you care about. The more of those things there are, the more you, overcame, you overcome that fear, the stronger your heart becomes. That will be your greatest weapon, as long as your heart does not break with fear. Nothing will ever stain your shield. You will never be defeated. Huh. He must have been an amazing servant. He's like the voice of reason. Yes, he was a wonderful man. No, all heroic spirits are great people. I'm lucky to have been able to learn so much from all those wonderful people. I see. So that's why your name is Caldea, huh? What about Caldea's name? Caldea isn't the name of a country. It's an observatory, right? This body knew about it. You're observing the planet, just like the light of the stars in the night sky. There you can see the life of another person who shined in the distant past, separated by thousands of years. A story of the stars in the sky and of this land. Weaving those together is what you, what Caldea does. I'm sure that wish is why I felt I could work with you. You reached out your hand not to use us, but to know us. If the youngest generation who lives in the now comes asking for help, no elder could refuse. A story of the stars. The true meaning of the name Caldea. Well, I don't know how deep its creator was thinking. By the way, Mash, is there anyone that John has special feelings for? <laughs> Someone that Senpai has feelings for? I don't really know. Why? I'm not really sure yet, but Arashkiel seems to really like him. I guess you could call it imprinting? He was the first human who treated her normally. So I was just curious. We're basically sisters, you know. I, I don't know. I don't know what Senpai did before coming to Caldea. But since coming to Caldea, every day has been so busy, so, um... In other words, John is nobody? Okay, this is getting fun. It'll be a three-way affair. Ishtar? An affair? Between who, who, and who? <laughs> Aw. Okay. Fo! You, Fo! Are you going to the ziggurat too, senpai? I thought I'd talk to the king one last time. <laughs> Me too. It was kind of like a daily ritual, after all. Let's go together. Yes, with pleasure. I'll stay with you to the end, senpai. What? The map of the underworld doesn't match what Ereshkigal said! The priests have some documents on the underworld. Go get them now. No, the dingir can stay where they are. Keep them on the walls in all directions. The dingir on the south and east gate can intercept Tiamat. Deploy the remaining soldiers there. <laughs> Leave us for a moment. The Caldean messengers are here. This is a good time for a break anyway. Sleep for three hours or so. I'll handle the rest. You're looking a little better. That means I can work you even harder tomorrow. So what is it tonight? Come for one final goodbye, have you? It won't be the last. <laughs> Listen to you. You've got me there. But, hmm. King Gilgamesh, you got quiet. Is something wrong? Nothing. I was just thinking you haven't changed at all. You look so frail for someone who spent a whole month in Uruk. The way you look, even after you go back to Caldea, no one you will believe the stories you tell them. Tricking the goddess on Mount Ebi, the grand battle in the jungle, descent into the underworld, defeating Gorgon and encountering Tiamat. They're all amazing stories to tell over drinks. It's truly a shame. Foul, foul! Well, it doesn't matter. I'll think of something for you to tell them about Uruk. So what is it? You didn't come here just to say goodbye, did you?
idiots. Seems you mongrels feel responsible somehow. Uruk fell. Many people died. It's all my fault for releasing Tiamat. Is that it? Fools. No one's interested in your repentance. And your misunderstanding is embarrassing. Mash. You told me that only 500 people from Sumer survived. You told me that only 500 people survived from Sumer, didn't you? That's wrong. It wasn't only 500. It was the great number of 500. After all, this present is different from the one I saw. In my vision, I was the only one left in Uruk. But what now? It's true that the end can't be changed. Uruk's destruction cannot be averted. But 500 survived. Even if they die tomorrow. Here at this final moment, this is how many humans remain. I consider that a great achievement. I acknowledge the worth of those who still struggle against a fated death. They have passed through the terminus of this era. King Gilgamesh, you knew, didn't you? That the end was coming. That Uruk would be destroyed. And yet you fought anyway? That's right. The Mage King sent the Grail to this era and pulled Tiamat from the world of the Void. At that point, I foresaw the future and told my people. Uruk will be destroyed in six months. This doom cannot be averted. There's no need to say what came after that. You saw all of it with your own eyes. The people of Uruk knew. And they still fought. They tried their hardest to survive until the last day. That's right. I like that smile, Mash Kirillite. If you were to take pity on them, I would have ended your life here. R right, that was inappropriate. I'm sorry, King. There's no need to be sorry. Uh, how humble can you get? John, I thought there was no need to defeat the goddesses. Even if we did, Tiamat would still appear. I was certain the three goddesses would destroy themselves. But you saved the people of Uruk, had compassion for this land, and chose to fight the goddesses. And this was the result. You saved the lives of 500 people who were fated to die. You should be proud of that. It is not a useless thing. Romani seems to be asleep. In that case, here's some unsolicited advice. This is about humanity and the singularities. You've traveled through six singularities so far. You must have fought many battles in the singularities. But when the Grail is recovered and the foundation of humanity is restored, all the damage from that singularity is erased. Was that what you were told? Yes. Once the incineration of humanity has been, has been stopped, everything that occurred during a singularity is repaired. And nobody remembers anything that we did. That's a lie. It's not true. The lives lost will not be restored. What's undone- what happened can now- can never be undone. But- but that wasn't what we were told. The singularities are anomalies in history. If that damage were, to, were reflected in human history, the whole course of human history would have to change. That's not it. That's not it at all. It's just made to match. For example, let's say a dragon kills someone, and then make the incin you make the singularity disappear. The incineration of humanity is prevented. Even then, that person is still dead. Instead of being killed by a dragon, history will remember them as having, as having been killed by some beast. Uruk is the same. Even if you defeat Tiamat and remove the singularity, the first dynasty of Uruk will fall. All that changes is the explanation, whether it was at the gods' hands or it simply deteriorated. Then our fight. That's right. It doesn't result in it didn't happen. I told you to be proud, didn't I? You've truly saved many lives. Do not be deluded by the notion that everything will go back to normal. You stubbornly, somewhat awkwardly saved the lives in front of you. And the result is what you see now in Uruk. All your choices had a meaning. In nature, there's no glory without sacrifice. Loss and gain are always balanced. Much is lost and much is gained. Even without the Mage King causing chaos with the Grail, something just as bad would happen eventually. 
the people of that era will weigh the scales of good and evil themselves, and their value will be judged by, the fu by future generations. That is how human history is made, John. Neither you nor I can say what came of- Ugh, man. Neither you nor I can say what came of your battles, what you protected or what you left behind. Only those who come after you will know. So for now, follow the path you choose. Yes, we'll take your words to heart, King Gilgamesh. Right. See you tomorrow. It's fine. Don't worry about it. You know, I destroyed my own country once, too. Foe? Yes. When I was spending all my time looking for immortality, I wandered for so long and came back empty-handed to a desolate country. The citizens were so sick of the, their absent king that they all went to other cities. Only Sidori was left. And even Sidori just said, I wasn't going to leave until I got a chance to complain to you. <laughs> I realized that was unworthy of a that I realized that was unworthy of a true king. And decided to rebuild Uruk, since I was in search of a new goal anyway. And so I came up with the idea of fortress cities, and made Uruk what it is today. At once it feels like an age, and the blink of an eye. It's like the re single remnant of a dream. But I haven't repented or anything, you know. Who I am will never change. A king doesn't live for his people. The people live for their king. But then what does a king live for? What else? He lives for the things he finds joy in. If anything, I ruled over Uruk for my, no for my own entertainment. And one of the things that entertained me was your struggles. I haven't seen the result yet, but you've done well enough. Tomorrow is the last day. Get some rest. I'm looking forward to the last fight, you know. Oh, I'm gonna do so much better than well enough. So this is the Celestial Hill. This is so stupid. Why did I come here just before the end? It's a place this body remembers well. The place where they made the first friend and made a vow. It's meaningless. This place is meaningless and so am I. I've lost everything. I should just shut down. My creator abandoned me and I never had a place. I never even had a place to return to. I'm just a fake after all. What are you doing? Why don't you stand, fool? <laughs> I can't believe this. Just how busy can I get tonight? I thought I could finally rest, but now I stumble on you. I will forgive you for dripping blood, everyone, for falling to your knees. But I won't allow you to put your corpse on display here. Get up and be gone. If you go, I'll ignore your crimes. <sighs> What's wrong? Can't you stand? Weren't you supposed to be the god's greatest creation? I don't know what happened, but you've got a huge hole in your chest. Talk about letting your guard down. What gives you the right to look down on me? I won't let you... Damn it! I can't let you. I can't let you see me like this. <laughs> Come to think of it, this, this thing's still been sitting around. I missed the chance to use it, and it feels silly, silly to just throw it away. You can have it. Huh? I know you were using the Grail as a heart before. The Great Grail of Uruk will work just as well. Why? Why are you doing this? I'm your enemy. Tiamat made me. I'm not your Enkidu. I'm just a doll with a different heart inside. That's right. You're not Enkidu. You're someone else using a stolen body. But even so, you are still worthy of my protection. No. My friendship. 
Do I have to spill it out, you hopeless fool? Even if your heart and soul are different, that body of yours is the one and only chain of heavens on the earth. <laughs> Once someone insisted they were a weapon to the very end. But if I had taken them at their word, then it's only natural for me to care about you. After all, you're the successor to the weapon I trusted most. What's wrong with me favoring you? Farewell, Kingu. It's the end of the world. Do as you will. Wait, I don't understand. What are you... I'm telling you that no matter who your mother is or how you were born, simply do the things you really want to do. Like we once did. You said you lost everything? That's laughable. You still have your freedom. You can shut down your heart later. What? It's too late. I never had a goal I could strive for. I never had a will of my own to choose freedom. Alright, I'll admit, uh, part 19 went on a bit longer than I thought it would, but, alright guys, we've got three sections left in Babylonia. One of those sections is all story. So really, we only have two combat sections left. Oh, man. I seriously can't believe we're almost fucking done with this. Uh, but yes. In the next episode, we'll take on section 20, and probably only section 20. Um. So maybe we have at least, maybe like, two or three more episodes left for, uh, Babylonia. We'll have to see how, if I decide to split them up at all or anything. So, I will see you all in the next one. Bye!